Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode, one of my favorite companies. I've been doing business with Linode for eight years now. They're growing all over the world. They're opening data centers all over the place. Mine is in New Jersey. However, they're opening up in Canada, Australia, India, everywhere. Uh, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your app. Like I pay $20 a month. I've scaled it to 250,000 customers in a single month with just using about five to 10% of my available resources on a $20 a month account. So if you guys are looking to host something yourself, there's really no better company that I recommend than Linode. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to get started with Django for e-commerce shops in 2020. So this is really one of the best products I've seen from Django. Uh, Django goes back to really like over 10 years now, when we look at Django and e-commerce platforms, we've, we've really haven't, in my opinion, I haven't seen anything that was truly impressive when you compare it to some of the PHP shops out there that have like uh, things like OpenCart or Magenta. Python Django has sort of struggled, but this new product that's come along is an open source product. It's completely free to use and it's built on top of Python and Django. The project's called Salier. And this project, I think, is rather impressive. It just simply works. Like you click on these different products here, you have all this stuff built for you. And again, it's all completely free to use. So this tutorial is actually gonna show you how to get everything set up and working so you can build your own e-commerce shop. Now, because this is a rather large project that is built using things like TypeScript, it's using React, it's using GraphQL, and it's also using things like Bootstrap and a ton of other di different dependencies, but it's what makes the project really work. And you'll see in this video that we'll actually get everything working. There are a few requirements that you have to have installed on your machine in order for this to work. Number one is going to be Git because we're going to use Git to actually clone this open source repository that's hosted on GitHub. Next, you're going to need to have Python installed. You're also going to need to have Node.js installed. All of these tools are free. You have to have build tools if you're going to be using Windows. So in this case, I'm going to be using Windows. And the easiest way to get Visual Studio's build tools is just to download the Community Edition of Visual Studio, which is a pretty good editor if you ever wanted to get into like .NET development or game development using something like Unity. Uh, it's a pretty good tool, although it is complicated to use. Luckily, we don't have to actually use the tool. The, uh, the build tools are going to be installed if you just install the Community Edition. Finally, we need to have Postgres uh, as well because that's going to be the database that we use. And you just need to pick whatever sort of platform you're on, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, and download and install that. And then one other thing too is the GTA, GTK Plus for Windows runtime. If you're using Windows, um, then you need to download this 64-bit installer. You can use either GTK 2 or 3. It doesn't matter. Both of them work. And uh, whatever one you want to use is, uh, is going to be completely up to you. So all that said, a lot of you guys probably already have a lot of these tools installed on your machine anyway, so you don't have to install everything. But with Postgres, there is something that when you go and you, you download the installer, it's going to come with a tool called PG Admin, which if you've ever used MySQL, there's a tool that's built with PHP called PHP My Admin. And it allows you to just have visual a visual look, a graphical user interface that you can use to interact with your databases, creating databases, seeing your users, and actually seeing the database tables and such. So that is a tool that you definitely want to have installed when you go to install Postgres. So I went ahead and I launched the PG Admin tool. One thing you want to keep in mind is that this stuff is all here by default, but when you install it, it's going to ask you to create a, um, a user account and by default, the user account that gets used is this Postgres. So that's actually your username. Like the, a lot of people, like if you log in with the username admin and put in a password, whatever it is, I just went ahead and I kept the standard Postgres as my username. But you can actually use whatever one you want. And then you want to create a password as well. And you'll see that we need to use that username and password in our Django configuration when our database tables are being created for us. You're also going to need something to write your code into unless you guys are hardcore and like to use like Notepad or something. I prefer Visual Studio Code, but if you're using PyCharm or something else, that's fine as well. But you need some sort of tool to, to actually write your code into. So I'll be using Visual Studio Code in this example. 
All right, so what I did is I created a projects folder and inside there I called it, uh, I created another folder called Django e-commerce in 2020 or just 2020 and underscores. And this is what I wanna use Visual Studio Code to open up to. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select this folder here. Computer's freezing up here. All right, now that we've done that, make sure your little Explorer icon is there. And when we right click inside the Explorer, we can say open in terminal. And we're going to use git in order to clone the repository. So we're going to say git clone in this GitHub address to salier.git. All the links will be in the description tab below. All right, so now that we've cloned the project, what you want to do is use Python's package manager to say pip install virtual environment and this way you don't have any sort of collisions when you have multiple python projects on the same computer this is going to go ahead and install virtual environment if it's not installed and now that we have it installed we can go ahead and use it so we're going to say virtual e and v and then the next thing is going to be the name of your environment i just like to use e and v for short and press enter and this is going to go ahead and create a virtual environment in our root project and here you can see it here all right, so now that that is successfully installed, we need to go ahead and CD into that new environment folder, go into your scripts folder, and then you just need to say activate. Now, if you're on Linux or Mac, you're probably gonna have to say source activate, but just on Windows, you just say activate. All right, so now on the left-hand side, you should see on the command prompt or terminal that you have whatever your environment name is inside parentheses, and that shows you that your environment is now activated. So let's go ahead and back up two directories to the root and we're gonna CD into the Salier project. All right, so this is the root directory of the Salier project. There is a ton of files in here, but it's a rather large project. All right, so to install all the Python dependencies for this project, what we need to do is say Python hyphen M pip install hyphen R requirements Txt. This is going to go through and install all the different Python dependencies and depending on how fast your internet connection is and your computer this could take a few minutes. Alright guys so once that goes through and like I said it's going to take a long time so if it's like taking a while it's probably not locked up it's just taking a long time. Go into the Salier folder through Visual Studio Code and then there's an internal Salier folder, and that's the actual Django core files. We're going to go into the settings.py, which is the main configuration for the project. And what we need to do is change the secret key. So just do a control F and look for your secret key. Now, by, the, by default, it's using an environment variable, but we don't have to actually set that. We can actually put uh, whatever you want, but make sure it's something unique to you. All right, guys, now we need to go ahead and create the database that we're going to be using for the store. So open up your PG admin. And when you click on servers, go into Postgres 11 or whatever version you have. And under databases, right click and say create database. And you can see here that I have this Postgres user. So what I want to do is just put in my name, uh, really the name of the, of the database. It could be whatever you want. I'm going to call it CodeHawk. And you can see the owner, like I said, is Postgres, so I just kept that the same. All right, so if that worked, you should now see the CodeHawk database or whatever you called it under your databases, and you're going to see that there's no tables in there, so it's just an empty database. Next, we need to go to the settings pie file again and look for this database dictionary definition here. And you can see by default it's saying use a Postgres database it's saying Sailor, but instead of Sailor, you can see that my name was uh, my username was Postgres, so I'm going to change that. This needs to be whatever sort of password you use for your main Postgres installation. And then finally, right here, this is going to be the name of the database that you created. And if you did the default settings, the database server should be listening on port 5432 by default. So again, change this to whatever password you decided to use. All right, now let's go back to the terminal from our root project and make sure you're in the, uh, the root Salier project. And what we're gonna do is create our Python database. So we're gonna say Python manage.py migrate. So 
So this is going through and it's creating all the different database tables that this project uses in order for your online store to function properly. And if you pull up your PG admin and look up your database, once this thing is finished, uh, you can see it's actually still being used. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our Node.js installation to install all the client-side dependencies, which includes things like GraphQL, TypeScript, React, and everything. And luckily, that's an easy process. We just have to say npm install. All right, after that, we're going to do another command that's built into the um, package.json file if you guys are interested, but it's called build assets. This is a requirement, so it's not like if you're interested in doing this or not, but just interested about where this stuff is coming from. All right, and then finally, we're, we're down to the last command, which we're going to say npm run build emails. All right, and once that's done, we can go ahead and now use Python to run our server, the built-in dev server for Django. All right, so you can see that the server is um, listening on localhost 8000 by default. And if we pull up the project, we actually have our working Django e-commerce platform now. All right, so a few things you'll notice is that there are no products like in the demo or anything like that. So if you try to click on anything, it doesn't really do anything. But let's go ahead and look at uh, the login first. So if we were to say, you know, what, I want to log in uh, and here you can register. But what we need to do is we need to actually create a super user so that we can log into the back end of our website. So let's kill the server real quick by pressing control C and we're going to say Python manage.py create super user all one word and this is just going to ask you for an email which is unlike other django applications because they already created all the authentication and groups and everything you need so all you need to do is just put in an email that you're going to use to sign into the account and this is my email i don't care if you guys have it it's on the about page of my channel so if you guys needed to contact me and i get inquiries all the time so I don't really mind. Um, and here you need to go ahead and put in a password that you're going to use to log into the back end of your website. All right, so now that you've done that, if we go ahead and run the server again, and if we go back to our website here and we log in, you can see that we now have this dashboard icon at the top. So if we click on the dashboard, this is the built-in Alter Django admin but it's used to manage all of your, your products and everything. So here, if you had categories, you would go ahead and define them here. And then there's different products and stuff like that. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a built-in tool to just go ahead and populate our store with some starter projects or really starter products. So let's kill the server again. And we're going to say Python manage.py and say populate DB. So this just, it doesn't just only create fake products. It also creates fake users um, and fake like email addresses and stuff and stuff like that and order history so that you guys can see how the entire thing works as you start to branch off and, and modify this to be your own storefront. So let's go ahead and run the store again. Didn't spell that right. All right, and when we view the project now, if we go into our dashboard, you can see that we now have all these fake users, fake products, and then there's also like sales history and stuff like that. Well, there's a sale actually to, to start a sale, but uh, orders is where the fake orders are. So if you want to see how all the orders are placed and how the, the thing looks, this is all inside of here. You can actually modify any one of these things if you wanted to. If you want to edit your product, just click edit product and you can start editing all the details through here. So all the documentation is actually available on Salier's website and the GitHub page, uh, GitHub page in order to understand how all this stuff should work. So let's go back to the main store, refresh, and 
let's go look at some of these products here. We can click on this, say add to our cart. You can see the cart is now working. Let's go over some groceries here. I'm going to get some green juice. And we can go to checkout. All right, guys. So as you go around and you try to modify this project, the templates and everything that is, so if you want to start subbing out some of the things, like, like if I were to say logo uh, or class equal logo, this is like a, a quick search because I know that the logo has a, a class that uses the word logo. So if you do control shift F, you, you can search all the project or all the files of your project. This is where the logo is inside the template. So you would sub out this SVG image with your own. So you can see logo light is where it's being referenced. So if we go into, um, let me close out the templates. If you go into the Salier folder down here at the, uh, what the hell is it? Uh, my bad, it's uh, static. It's inside the Sailor folder, static, and then inside here you can see all the images here. So you would just go ahead and find whatever sort of logo you have and, and sub it out. So here's the logo light. And you can add a new SVG, or you could just have it be an actual PNG, whatever you want to do. But all the assets and everything are in here, and you just basically need to start tweaking your template, tweaking your images, and start building out your store. All right, guys, I hope you liked the tutorial. I'm going to get into some more Django stuff. I have a new Django course that's coming out, and I'll also go ahead and expand upon this as well. Like, there's different providers, that, uh, payment providers that you can integrate with, things like Stripe and uh, a few other ones that, that are available to you. But when it goes to actually deploying this on something like Linode, that's going to be a little bit of a headache, but um, I do plan to have future tutorials on how to actually go to deploy this website to an actual server. But at least this should be good enough to get you guys going so that you can refer to the official documentation in order to learn all the different pieces of this platform and how to integrate it to make it your own. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe and have a good day. Take care. Bye.